Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered brought a lot of mixed reactions when it was announced. Since the original game is still so well regarded and was already upgraded to 60fps on PlayStation 5, many fans questioned that need for a remaster just a few years after its initial release. But now that it's almost out, players are seeing some impressive improvements, especially in the visual quality, loading times and overall convenience. I want to break down a little bit and what's really changed and discuss the pros and cons that are shaping how people are feeling about this updated version. One of the first things fans have noticed is how stunning Horizon Zero Dawn looks in the remastered edition. Even though a lot of us remember the original being beautiful, putting it side by side with the remaster reveals a huge, huge difference. The lighting, textures and the environmental details have all been enhanced. Cities like Meridian, for an instance, are the whole new experience now. Meridian feels much more alive, with additional greenery and more NPCs filling the streets. It's a little touch that adds a real post-apocalyptic atmosphere, where it seems like nature is taking over. Meridian's makeover is one of the highlights for a lot of players, but there's some disappointment that other settlements didn't get the same treatment. Fans of the game might remember the capital city standing out, and it makes sense that they put a lot of effort into making it more immersive. However, when visiting other towns, the updates aren't as noticeable, leaving some players wishing for the same level of detail and vibrancy across the board. This inconsistency has sparked a debate over whether enough was done to make the world feel more cohesive. Now, one of the biggest quality of life changes is the improved loading times, whereas a major upgrade from the original. Fast travel, for an example, now feels really pretty much instant. Loading times that used to take around, what, 20 seconds to give or take are now halved or even shorter than that, especially when moving quickly between the locations. For a game that relies a lot on traveling through large open areas, these faster loading times are a game changer. Plus, just like Horizon Forbidden West, there's an option to skip the standby screen by activating the immediate standby mode, which lets you jump right back into the gameplay without having to press a button every time. A small touch, but it makes the game feel smoother and more modern. Another plus is how easy it is to bring over your save data from the PlayStation 4 version. Anyone who put in hours of in the original game can import not only their standard playthrough, but also their new Game Plus save and a player profile, which keeps the new Game Plus unlocks. This means that if you already invested a lot of time in Horizon Zero Dawn, you won't have to start from the scratch. You can jump right into the remaster and continue your adventures, which has been especially appreciated for longtime fans of the game, such as myself included. The remaster also introduces a whole bunch of new gameplay and accessibility options. This brings a more in line with the modern standards. It's something PlayStation has been improving across many of its recent titles. Difficulty settings are now highly customizable, letting players adjust Aloy's damage taken or de dealt separately, which allows for more tailored experiences. You can make Aloy practically invincible or increase the challenge with one-sided combat damage. So you can replay the game with a fresh difficulty twist that wasn't possible before. One fan favorite feature is the ability to turn off Aloy's pickup animations, and this definitely is for me. In the original, Aloy would stop, kneel down, each time you gather any sorts of items around the world, which actually slowed down the gameplay. Now you can turn off the animations entirely, speeding up the flow of the exploration and gathering resources. Some fans missed the auto pickup feature that was actually present in Forbidden West, which lets Aloy practically just collect items by simply walking over them. But this improvement is still is appreciated. There's also a full accessibility tab now, bringing settings up to a more modern standard, with options such as auto healing, auto concentrate for slow time when aiming, and more. These improvements give more control over the gameplay experience catering to both new players and of course the returning fans who want to play the game in a different of ways. However, a few features from Forbidden West like Easy Loot, where machines always drop all their parts, and the weapon quick swap feature didn't unfortunately make it into the remaster. While it's not a huge deal, these features would have added the convenience touch that fans have gotten used to in the sequel. Upgrading characters' models and conversation animations was another focus in this remaster. 
In the original game, conversations were fairly static, with limited movements beyond head and upper body gestures. In the remaster, conversations are now framed more naturally, with full body animations that make the dialogue feel more realistic. Characters have also been given an updated outfits, and lighting during the dialogue scenes is a lot more dynamic. This has definitely been a welcome change. Although some players feel that the character movement can still look a bit robotic comparing to more recent games. It's clear that the remaster made some nice improvements, even if it's not quite at the level of Forbidden West. The remaster has an entirely new trophy list. Well, just to clarify, these are indeed all the new trophies that you can gain from the PlayStation 5 version Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, but every single trophy is identical that was present already in the PlayStation 4 version. But still, this actually adds an extra incentive for the fans who want to explore the game again. However, there have been some reports of some of the trophies not triggering correctly on the max level saves. But if you're a trophy hunter, such as myself, you might need to start a new game to make sure everything works. The photo mode as well has also received a slight upgrade, allowing for more precise adjustments and the addition of the lens flare, which is a fun addition for the fans who love capturing moments in the game's beautiful landscapes. Despite all these improvements, some people feel that Horizon Zero Dawn didn't really need a remaster, since the original game is already playable at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5. Many people question whether this graphical improvement and quality of life changes justify a new version and even a $10 upgrade price. And while the graphical enhancements are certainly noticeable, they're not as groundbreaking as we saw in Forbidden West. Some fans argue that the game already looked great, and would have preferred the resources to go towards new content, expansions, or updates for the Forbidden West, or the upcoming Horizon project. Overall, Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered is a solid upgrade that brings the game closer to modern standards, especially with faster loading times, graphical improvements, and more accessibility options. It's an impressive remaster for the fans who want to relive Aloy's journey with a fresh coat of paint and a $10 upgrade cost. It offers actually quite a good value for those planning to replay this game. However, without any new story content or major gameplay additions, some players might boot this up, explore a few areas, and just set it aside. Now, for those who missed out on the original, this remaster makes it a fantastic time to experience the game for the first time. But if you're a long-time fan who already moved on to Forbidden West, you might find it quite hard to justify spending much more time with this remaster, especially since it lacks the polish and the features of the sequel. In the end, Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered offers a great quality of life update and enhances the experience for the newcomers and fans who want to dive back into Aloy's world. But for some, the improvements may not feel essential, and the debate continues about whether the remaster was needed. Other than that, I wanted to also mention guys, this is important in terms of my personal life anyway, it's a little bit of a quick heads up. I'll be heading to London for a few days. But do not worry, I've got you covered with scheduled videos dropping every other day while I'm away, and you still have new content to enjoy. I may miss out on covering any breaking news or hot topics that may pop up while I'm gone, but I'll be back just in time for the PlayStation 5 Pro's launch. And you can bet there's going to be plenty of videos about it waiting for you, along with all the updates on anything that I miss. FYI, all these scheduled videos that I already mentioned are actually currently available to be seen in the early access on my Patreon. So please consider supporting me on my Patreon where you'll find over 10 videos already available for your viewing. And at that, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys all later.